get to read this you. since you're the guest. He, he can't see it. Why did he, 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 he I, I'm, I'm pointing. I don't know why I'm pointing. Maybe you can get it. You know, all like, Lego games, you know, I mean, like all Lego games have funky things about them. We still have so much more to talk oh, about this story. We got plenty to talk about. Oh, we have so much to talk about. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Ladies and gentlemen, look at we, what you guys are seeing in front of you right now. I can't believe it. Oh my goodness. It's a new setup. And let me tell you, I'm pretty excited to see how this turns out for you guys. Who dis? So, who new, dis? new setup, who dis? <laughs> who dis? And why is my tablet constantly oh no. bombarding me with updates? I need this. What? Go close it. Son oh, of no. a yeah. Close the curtain. Don't hit the table. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. I forgot okay, well, that, was, that was part of my duty as uh, Brian. Are you some? Because I'm Brian now. Brian's oh, caretaker. My. Oh, goodness. You're, you're following the ball here. Too. But yeah, Brian hit the table and knocked over the camera. So we had to improvise here and tape it to its that. stand. And he forgot the. Not only did I hit the camera, he forgot I all did the it twice. Stands too. He forgot all this, the stands for the mics. <laughs> and, and left them at Jeff's place yeah. of residence. I don't know why he don't left them at my that. apartment. Not only that, but he went to Jeff's house and said, I'm going to forget these here. <laughs> yeah, for just, real. Just, just kind of kind of weird. I don't know why. <laughs> Gaslighting doesn't exist. He's thanks, a weird thanks, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> Gaslighting. Now, we'd, have to, we'd have to throw the no. big in there. Come no. on. <laughs> It's not necessary. But yeah, if you guys, you know, couldn't tell, even though I blatantly already said that we had a new setup, but we have a couple new cameras. Uh, The configuration of the cameras is a little bit different, and hopefully this looks appealing to you guys. You will let us know in the comments, I'm sure. Just kidding. We don't get any comments. Somebody comment. So please comment in our videos. I'll comment. Thanks, Tyler. Hey, Appreciate welcome. it. You're usually the one that does comment. <laughs> that's my job. Make sure to check out our first video in two days. Yeah, that's right. Which two is days. A week ago. Which is a week ago. <laughs> you but just you just put me in a paradox. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's very confusing yeah. for us too. So I'm sure I'll mess that up a couple times during the the, the extent of this podcast. So, but yeah, a couple new cameras, a bunch of new mics. We actually have enough now, so we can have the typical crew. Hey. Typical Woo. crew does not include yeah. Eric anymore. I'm, he's been banished. <laughs> he's oh, been no. banished. <laughs> but uh, we can now support not only the four of us, but also a guest. One more person. And so that you know, I'm, I'm pretty pumped for that. But You know, for the time being, I should just move up there. You really could. Oh, yeah, you probably could have. <laughs> like, it's a little late now, but, but we see, could have just set up the other boom arm. Yeah, we could have. We You're could audio have. technical engineer, the, Jeff. The, the, you gotta be I, in this, I don't do anything over front here front desk. The well, whole time. May, well, eventually, we'll probably need that screen. Well, once we, once we, I mean, yeah. Once we finalize our setup. To be fair, I airplay to that, though. True. So you could true. also do so, that from over here. Yeah. <laughs> he, could, uh, <laughs> he could do that from the other you room. You could literally do that true. from anywhere. Yeah. But Imagine this. But we, yes, I understand what We you set mean. up like a bunch of extenders. So that way Jeff can be in the other room and we just hear him, but we a don't see A bunch of extenders. <laughs> Elaborate, please. Wait, extenders. <laughs> hold up. Hold up. Let's go back for a second. We got him a new headset and then didn't put the bridge back in. So oh, then, yeah. We, we so could have done that. Whoops. We'll get <laughs> this right in, you know, three or four podcasts yeah. from now. <laughs> no bridge. We'll, we'll, we'll get it figured out. Yeah. Eventually. But, but yeah, uh, before we get started today... Uh, let's let's take some time here to appreciate all the moms out there. Oh yeah! So, so it was just at the day. recording at of the, the time of this recording, <laughs> what you didn't like the way I, I worded that? No, my vernacular. Appreciate mothers. <laughs> vernacular. Take some time to appreciate all the moms out there. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day! So yeah, uh, at the time of this recording, it is the day after Mother's Day. However, yes. we want to we want to shout out all the moms Thanks, out there moms. and how you know. Th- Mothers are an important and pivotal part of all of our lives, and uh, taking the time, especially in I don't I don't know in a, in a day and age where it seems to be a little self centered. <laughs> I don't know generation. I don't know if it's just me if I'm being a big big old boomer. But yeah, boomer boomer. But all of us have phenomenal okay, <laughs> phenomenal mothers, and we would like to to shout them shout them out here. So my mom makes love the best. Mom. My mom makes the best chili. Angela Tippering. I love my mom. Makes the Lisa, best one. Lynn, 
Warren Gray. <laughs> but she has two middle names. No. <laughs> <laughs> what? Warren's her maiden name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she do make the best chili though. Was I supposed to say no my lie. mom's name now? Were yeah, we going around wait. the table? I, I mean, we, I was just, a lawyer. You could have said it. There you go. The Ann Taggart. Ooh. Love you, moms. But moving on to today's main topic. Oh, baby. And that's going to be uh, discussing the recent controversy regarding Ja Morant. Ja Moron. <laughs> I saw that. What controversy? <laughs> yeah, what, so, what happened? I had an article pulled up, but he I lost stop. it because what my happened? tablet no, wanted to keep <laughs> <laughs> it. You can't keep... stop using weapons. Hey, I'm trying to introduce the topic here. Everyone shut up. <laughs> Roger. I, that's, no, I'm, I'm, I'm actually testing out the mics here. That was he just wanted to see what it sounded like. I just wanted to see yell. it sound like when I yelled. So Wait, can I yell too? No. I mean, if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want you, me to you yell. You yelled earlier. <laughs> but... Anyways, so John Morant recently was on an IG Live brandishing a firearm. And, of course, there have been <laughs> multiple. What? For the second time. For the second time. There's been multiple inc- incidents with <laughs> regarding John ja Morant. He's so dumb. I don't want to. I don't really. <laughs> so I don't want to go into essentially wh- why what he was doing was wrong. And, you know, the millions of dollars he's going to lose in in endorsements and how it affects the league or anything like that. However, what I want to focus on in particular is the concept of surrounding yourself with the people who will make you the best you. And how important it is to, you know, surround yourself with individuals that are going to not bring you down, but uplift you. And also kind of go into the importance of how your environment affects your behavior and how easy it is to be influenced by said environment. And an environment can be putting yourself in a, in a deleterious situation. Like, I mean, you I don't could know, have created like, the environment. It cre- yeah. You can create the environment. You know, there's a lot of different ways in which the environment influence you, influences your bad habits or addictions or things like that. But importantly, in Jaws case and i you know like i said before multiple people have already talked about how what he's doing is bad and how it'll affect his brand how it'll affect his the team and people around but i want to specifically focus on in his brand it could just (laughs) end his brand before it really even got going as it was starting yeah and there's multiple different situations and i think for one and i want to get your guys's opinion on this specifically is how important it is to create a, 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 a you know not only a friend group or create an environment but also how important the people that are around you influence your said environment that you create for yourself so my main question being is what do you guys think about how John Morant is handling the situation, not in terms of what he did, but how the people around him, not just John Morant himself, but also the people around him, even within the organization, how how you think they should be handling this, how Jaw should should be handling this in terms of environment and his social influences, yeah. and kind of the, the repercussions about what happened and what he can do to, to fix that. So... Long story short, what do you guys think about like the importance of having or surrounding yourself with, you know, friends? Yeah, I essentially mean, good friends. I think that and what that means. I think that it's obviously very important because it affects a lot of your decision making process. But on top of that, for like this particular situation, you know, we may not. I don't know who necessarily is around him, but obviously you see a lot of the. I don't know if it's the same people in the videos, but. He's making. He's doing the same things, and so you'd yeah. assume it's with the same similar people or the same people. But um, for like him in particular, like he has, like or I guess his situation is obviously super unique because of how magnified everything he's going to do is. Yeah. yeah, and so when you get into a situation like that, that's why you hear a lot of the other a lot of other players or a lot of other celebrities and stuff, they talk about how important their support group is and like surrounding themselves with the right people. 
And so like, but who who is the right people? So what do, what do you mean? The what right do you mean by the, the be, right people? I mean, I think it's. I'd say first, I'd go with people that have been there before for like Jaws. Well, I mean, I mean, yeah, 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 people who have been so there. So like, for Jaws example, like, stay if you stick in the NBA for like this well, well, particular let's, example. Let's 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 leave Jaws situation aside. In general, like just for yourself, right? For what, yourself, like so just I, just as an individual, as a person living in society. Society. Like society. society. I like, say peacock. <laughs> Nobody bats an eye. <laughs> You know the rest. <laughs> I don't think they do. But, um, <laughs> oh, you want me to say? <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, join our Discord if you want to hear the rest. But, Let's um, go, baby. The uh, for yourself, I mean, it's got to be people that have. Well, first off, having like a mentor or somebody who's older than you. That's yeah. a, that's something no, that's see, super that's, important. I'm glad. I'm glad you brought that up because he could take advice from that too. Because there's got to be. Vets on his team, right? That have been that, there. Before. Oh, one hundred percent. You know what it's like to be in in the spotlight all the time. He has so yeah. many resources. That's I think that's what makes me upset the most is how much he's just he a, has he's all just a these moron. resources. I mean, he plays with Danny Green, right? He has all these resources. Oh, who's like available? Thirty well, five for one. <laughs> yeah. So so there's multiple. There's and multiple. won a championship. Played with LeBron. Like yeah, that's yeah. Like, yeah. a bigger spotlight than that. He's like a superstar. So like any any of the vets in the league, he could talk to them. And get yeah. advice so, from so them. I think that there's but instead he's waving guns around on, <laughs> on freaking IG Live because he wants to act tough. Allegedly. Allegedly. No, no. <laughs> they're, 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 I saw that. They're doing I an investigation right now. <laughs> they're looking into yeah. it. He's suspended <laughs> indefinitely <laughs> until we figure out if he did actually. But anyways, so I think there's they dropped the ball in from multiple, multiple perspectives. So but the yeah, one, they're like, Initially, when he so he this is not the first time for those of you who don't know that where he is he it, flashed uh, a firearm. Uh, was it an IG live? Yeah. What? Oh, podcast, I get a podcast water. water. Somebody need a water. <laughs> oh my oh, god, we gotta get Jeff. Jeff to get the po- <laughs> pro- podcast. Sorry, water. I'm getting a little bit thirsty. But, but there's there's multiple there's multiple. So for one, the pipe bomb is about to go off. Oh my! Society. Did what? Hold up. Did something stop? We're having some technical diff- technical. Or we may be having some technical difficulties. Which we, one? We gotta find the source oh, of the ticket. Cut. All right, uh, Jeff. Can I get that? Can I get that water? <laughs> All right. Sorry, we've been experiencing some. Technical difficulty, so it's hopefully a, it's a new setup. <laughs> you threw that so <laughs> well, hard. It's, it's a new new setup. It's no. new to us too. So hopefully we it's can just finish this podcast before everything melts down. Quick, <laughs> speed, not, speed, so, speed. But, but anyways, okay. So as <laughs> as I was saying, I think one thing in uh, in terms of John Morant, there's two different perspectives. There's one, the people around him. I don't understand why. He's not getting help from them. And I think the league kind of fumbled in a way during his first mm-hmm. su- suspension where they just sent him off to Florida for eight days for rehabilitation. And like, I'm not, a, I'm not a psychiatrist, but I think it takes a little bit longer than eight days to fix a habitual, like, it, it, well, you know, a habit, right? What is it like 66 days or something like that? I forget how long it is to break a habit of constant and, and, repetition in terms of like you have to perform or stay away from whatever it is that you're doing yeah right whatever you are addicted to or whatever you have a habit of before you could even think to break it i don't know the the exact time frame but it's it's you know two months plus right and you really think if he is actually struggling with his identity or struggling with the way that he needs to perceive himself to others or any of those type of, you know, you know, psycho analytic, whatever, however you want to describe it, right? That he's going to get that done in eight days. Like, come on, let's be real. Yeah. So I think the league fumble, I guess there's more three. I think the people around him need to be, like you said, mentors need to come to him. Maybe he had, I don't know. I don't know. I, I could be wrong on that. Maybe he has a mentor. He, he, he a may have, mentor. maybe he could has be. a lot of people. <laughs> Maybe that's how around he got his here. circle. Maybe. <laughs> no, yeah, like trying to help him, he's just refusing help. But you know, the big thing 
is you know the change has to start with him. He's got to be the one to initiate that that change. I mean, if I'm being honest, and the I'm, people he's surrounding himself with, I'm surprised that this hasn't happened more with like any and all celebrities because it's got to be I weird. Mean, it's got to be a strange thing because when you're just a normal person, you can do anything you want without everybody <laughs> yeah. in the well, entire think, country you, scrutinizing you. You got to think of his, anything. Yeah. his story, right? I mean, he went from. Uh, I mean, small town. I think it was a, a town of like 3,000. I mean, a town similar to Odin, right? To instant fame. And I think... Uh, well, I mean, he didn't even have the fame in college either until like the last the last couple then, months. Yeah. Would you consider that culture shock? I, I Probably. I would say Maybe. it's a massive culture, like a massive culture shock for him. It's gotta be weird. And, and you know, like this kid is what? 23, 22, 23. I mean, he's younger than most of us. Oh my god! Yeah, probably. So I, why is I he can't... acting like such a moron? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> so like, he, just coming directly, I think that's one of the big issues. I, I don't know if it's necessarily an issue, but like, I think the NBA needs to heavily invest for young kids coming into the league and have certain set programs so that they can slowly adapt to being extremely famous. Because you know, like, college I think fo- most sports leagues do. They need to, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's more because like, prim- I don't think any of them do. Because I think uh, any most of them, it's just like, yeah, find a vet and find good a luck. vet and find a <laughs> support luck. group and so, yeah, it's just like you I know, mean they it, have they have like uh, on staff like therapists and everything, but in terms of like you could actually set up a I mean, I, I guess there are certain organizations that do it well, and they have guys that onboard you and everything into the league so that you know what you're getting yeah. hit with. But then there's others that necessi- don't necessarily do that. Because, like, I know of a few teams that, like, they have guys that are on staff and they're meant to directly work with, like, rookies. And, like, yeah. that's their only job. I'm sure there, call there that, are like, some. talent relations. Yeah, or, like, I think, talent. like, the Colts have one that's, like, a... That's what the WWE calls it. That's why yeah. I call it talent relations. The, Col- <laughs> the Colts have one. I forget his... I, but I know he, like, his entire job is to work with rookies in terms yeah. of adapting them to the league. And like getting them used to what they're about to face. Yeah. But now, like, I don't. I don't think his. But if you're a first round, if you're a second overall pick, that might be something that you completely look over too, because you're the second yeah. overall pick. pick. You're just worried about your game. I mean, you're just worried about your game, and then. Whereas, like, if you're a NFL seventh round the rookie, money. then nobody's that's going to be the first are. guy that you go to because no one's going to know who you are, and, and this guy's going to be trying exactly. to help you. Exactly. Exactly. Well, do you no. think? Okay, so. Let's say that he does have all this kind of help, right? Who's to say that he's even listening to them? Because no, that's what I was saying. Like yeah, they like, could very yeah, well may, they could be trying be. to help him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then and then he's just whatever. Yeah, a, like I don't care what you have to say. There's a bunch you don't know, and the only person you hear from from it is and I think himself. I, I think that's another. He's the only one that really talks on it. Yeah. yeah. Like, and we don't necessarily need to hear it. However, you would think somebody, if somebody in his circle, right, or some veteran, somebody on the team. If there was somebody actually helping him, they he would have came out sooner before this ever happened, or he would have. And it could it be would have been he, spoken. Yeah, I don't know. It could be that he, you know, like that we said, like you don't know if he's listening or not because, like, mm-hmm. his dad's at every game. Well, I so, think like, his, his parents, his parents well, are there. I, well, I don't know. His mom like, is not. The, I don't know if you've heard. Essentially, a couple of instances that were controversial that require is when his mom well, yeah. would call him. There was the incident at the mall where he called, and then a bunch of his, him and his friends showed up and basically bullied a kid into a, essentially into like a storeroom where he was there for 30, 45 minutes. Didn't know if this, these, these guys were, I mean, basically his, he felt like his life was in, you know, was being threatened at that very moment. So then law enforcement was involved. Then the law enforcement thought their lives were in jeopardy. And felt endangered because of the way him and his friends were acting, mm-hmm. just because his mom called. And then it happened again with at a I think it was a vo- his sister's volleyball or basketball game, yeah. where a female student was video recording his mom or something, or was hagging on his mother. And then his mom called. I'm like, if you're the mother in that situation, why even put your son in those situations where you're basically setting him up for failure? Let's keep going. And speaking hey. of failure, we I think we, we may have lost another. 
We lost a good one if, today. If, 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 we if, lost a good if one. Any, you know, if, we, if we can, I don't know, we may continue and put this out still without video. Name, Tyler. We still have us and then we also have you said audio. What? So, yeah. so We're good. We'll, we'll, we'll press forward regardless <laughs> of the video. So we apologize for that. We're still, still learning. New but, cameras. New cameras. But anyways, back from draw and going back to the main point is... It's, it's just essentially finding those people. And I think the people that are in his friend group, let's be real. They're probably just using Jaw, Jaw his, his, basically yeah, his status to promote or to... Which is... Well, cause in, 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 that goes in, back to him, him having to... I mean, that's a... You don't know if you're him. Especially at first. Well, I, I, I like yeah, you don't know I'm if you're sure him the, at first I'm because sure. you might think the guy's a real friend, and then no, all of a no, sudden, they're like, not real friends. Years down the line, I, I, I yeah, don't even, you don't even have to be. I don't think but you should I'm be questioning is, from that right his now. perspective. Is when he chose yeah. those friends, he probably didn't no, know. No, yes, that's yeah. correct. That's yeah. true. And I, 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 you know, it's kind of hard, especially if you have lifelong friends, right? Yeah, it's hard to put push those people aside, especially if they're becoming a bad. Hey, and like, I'm yeah. not saying that's hard to do. It's hard. I mean. In a given instant, whether or not you should do it, obviously you should, yeah. you know, get those people out of your life. However, it's like, I can understand the struggle behind that. Yeah. That's where I think, you know, having mentors having, and having counseling and having other avenues to seek help are important so they can help you through those situations, which yeah, I don't think and is then happening. You can- Use your, you know, you you can you when you find yourself in those situations where you does feel like you're being used, or it feels like maybe you're in a bad group of friends or something. You can go to that mentor. You can go to that, whether it's like a a mental health therapist or anything. Like, yeah, you could go to someone else, whether it's a professional or like a friend or, uh, like a close friend, like a vet or something. Like if you're on a team, like somebody you're looking up to, yeah. a mentor. You can you can go to those people to then figure out what to do yeah and because what i mean you, sure. then you don't have to make the decision on yourself already figured it out true cut, already know. cut those people off oh definitely they're bad news no i find agree. other friends it's it's famous. Famous. Yeah. yeah there's so many people they're in this just world that you know down. who you are yeah. and are not find bad someone. people or maybe just don't record yourself doing things that I, well, he are wasn't recording upon. but he is the one holding the firearm it's like what well, yeah. i i just i just don't get it like i just don't understand why you don't have the, you know, the the foresight or the fort. What's what's the fourth rule or whatever? Foresight. For, well, foresight, but there's another. Would you say weird, wherewithal? Wherewithal. Yes. That's hey, what I tried. I was trying. Yes. I, was combining, yes. I was combining forethought and wherewithal into one word, but that's for yes. with all. For with all. <laughs> <laughs> Wearsight. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, I mean, we're all. I mean, we're all young men, right? And I think all of us have had at least an influential figure in our life and that could just i mean in our case i think a lot of our are our fathers but you know we've had coaches mentors teachers at least i have personally yeah. i don't want to speak i mean we're all we're all together but i think we all have those people in our lives yeah uh, ex- excluding jeff i guess i don't know. i influence <laughs> i influence myself <laughs> i'm my jeff's own has, man jeff wakes jeff's up looks zero. in the mirror and i'm like <laughs> Yeah. I'm inspired right. a lot by this son I'm having. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Jeff's, Jeff's had zero people in his life that he's ever looked up to. <laughs> yeah. Only himself. He looks but down on people. When you're, yeah, it's hard when you're just <laughs> looking down on people. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, but yeah, you know, we, we, we've all, all all had those people. And, and yes. those people are vitally important to our, you know, we're obviously the, I mean, come on, look at us. Extremely yeah. successful. We and, have a podcast and sexy. Don't forget sexy. Uh. But it's it's like you know <laughs> those people. What are you laughing at? I made funny noise. No, you didn't. It wasn't funny. I didn't think it was funny. Oh, I'm, I'm not sorry. laughing. He's not laughing. <laughs> I was trying to make Dang Jeff, Jeff laugh. <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> and these things came with slime all over them. <laughs> we return and, these. And Tyler's going to suck it up. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, in, in all seriousness, like that, I think yeah. for, for me personally, those people are, you know, the reason that I was able to make it through college and engineering and become the person I am is because of those people that I've set an influence in our life. And I think Jaw probably still has some of those people he could fall through. I, I mean, he did not make it through 
all of this alone, obviously. Right. And um, I think he just needs to get back into the in, into that rhythm and, and or back in. I don't know if he ever. I'm, I'm speaking as if it, you, you can make assumptions, right? All you want. He needs to stop acting like a goober. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Long True story answer. Short. He knows he's doing something wrong. He knows that. Yeah, but he refuses to just be like. Uh, maybe I shouldn't do something stupid today. I mean, I, 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 you know, let's it's, do it's, something stupid today. And him and his buddies are like, <laughs> how funny and like would I be. said, John, that's how funny I, it would be if I, I started IG and, Live and, and, and you're and like, here's the thing. Here's let me the wave thing. a gun around. <laughs> before, before, uh, before you get into that, I, I, I kind of, I, I somewhat, I mean, yes, obviously just quit being stupid, John. I mean, it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty, but I, that's the reason why I didn't want to go into, because it's hard to put ourselves in his shoes, right? Being extremely talented, dealing with millions and millions and millions of dollars. I've never been talented <laughs> in anything in my life. life. At, 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 <laughs> at the peak of, I mean, come on. There's only, you know, there's only th- what? How many people in the yeah, first I round mean, of the draft? Is, uh, there's one of 30. thirty team or thirty people, right, to be yeah. drafted. He's, and he went second. He's a so damn he good went ball second. player. And so it's like we can't really. It's but true. that's why I want to emphasize the something that we can relate to yeah. and that's the people we surround ourselves with your network is everything in your life network is is vitally important and i mean you can see that in the, in the any you know the jobs that you, yeah. you apply for having a network of people even if you just boil it down to like your friendships your with friendships people, with people yeah that's because like your friends if you think about it they influence almost everything about you and that's almost a good point. Everything. and here, here's my next point and uh, i'm kind of you i kind of used your situation to move to transfer into this to and segue it, into just, this to, 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 segue. to segue thank you to segue into this next and, and that's it's uh how difficult it is to essentially when you're in a, a particular environment or a particular situation how difficult it is to to fall into said environment and fall into how said behavior that is determined on the people that you're you're with and I don't know about you guys, but specifically when you're with your your behavior will change when you're when you're with friends, right? And your behavior will change when you're yeah. in a professional setting. Your behavior will change. I mean, you see this just in just it's human nature, right? And fighting against that, right? Why would you want to fight it in the midst of the situation rather than fight it beforehand? Right, right, and so it's always harder. It's it's always hard, and it never works. You're you're never gonna make that right situation. You're ne- you're never gonna make. I mean, I'm not gonna say never, but almost ne- you're never when you're in the midst of a a, a predicament or a, a deleterious or however you want to phrase it. Right, you're almost never going to make the the correct choice. You're always gonna fall into the addiction, the desire, and that has a lot to do, like I said, and we'll, we'll repeat it multiple times, your environment and the people that you're, you're surrounded by. Well, that and they, so I, I, let, me, let me ask you this before, um, before, you, or before you speak, Tyler, because I think you're, gonna, you're pretty much going to answer the question before I even ask it. Because <laughs> you have that, you have that four with, four with all. We're live. Four through. <laughs> I have the wear site. <laughs> you have the, the wear site. site. <laughs> the wear site. The wear site. <laughs> but um, now I lost my train of thought. Dormammu, I've come to bargain. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, essentially, like, w- what are you guys' thoughts? In, and I think we kind of already talked about it a little bit. But, like, how, how do you guys handle, like, or, or what do you think is the best way? I mean, obviously you have to never put yourself in that situation to begin with. But I'm kind of curious on how you prevent that from happening or what are some of the things that you, you, you do before, like, cause I think it's important to always like before you even get there, you need to retroactively take steps to avoid whatever it is. I, you know, I'm talking generically, but what are some situations that you can, you can think of that would, um, I think, Anything to do with uh, drugs or something. So, like alcohol, be, right? Yeah. So alcohol. Like, for example, like, why if, if, if you're struggling with alcohol, alcoholism, or if there is, you know, any sort of, of addiction whatsoever, but we'll just, you know, we, we'll use alcohol as, as the example. Like, why would you even 
go to the bar, like say you're gonna you're gonna try to stop drinking, right? Or you're trying to you're trying to limit the amount of alcohol you consume, right? Why even go to the bar, right? Like yeah. why even put yourself in that situation? You need to fight the you need to because you need to stop that before it it it, it even manifests within that certain situation, right? And so, like in Jaws' case or in anyone's case, like what are some ways that you guys handle those types of situations? Out of curiosity, right? And it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be alcohol. It can be. It can be anything, right? It can be exercise. It can be habits. It can be. You know, obviously, we're we're it's not exercise. <laughs> yeah, it's we're, not we're, exercise. It's, 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 it, could, it could even. I be, do not you know, handle that well. <laughs> like, it, could, it could be schoolwork. It could be procrastination. It can be your work life. You know, like I think there's a lot of good things that uh, that we can do beforehand to even prevent. A deleterious situation. So I don't know. What are you guys' thoughts on on I that think whole? If uh, if you really just weigh what the consequences are, mm-hmm. and really yeah. just think about it, and think hard on it, because something like this, like this, could be anything from, oh, should I go down to the bar and have drinks, or should I smoke crystal meth with my friends? <laughs> yeah. and One sounds can, a lot more fun. <laughs> listen, you can apply this to almost anything. Oh, yeah. 100%. Right? Yeah. You just have to think about the consequences of your actions because if you don't think about that, then it's easy. Then you're going to do it 100% of the time and you're going to ruin your life. It's like Mr. Stahl said in government. What's your opportunity cost? Yeah. That's true. Way, I well, think about that a lot, cut. actually. They, they used to, Mr. Uh, Saw? <laughs> they used to say... <laughs> and him talking about opportunity <laughs> costs <laughs> and eliminating the income tax bill that I proposed that <laughs> went through unanimously, but... <laughs> it was perfect. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway. It was incredible. But what they used to say in basic training to us was, you're going to always have two choices. You can either do the wrong thing, which is always easy, or you can do the right mm. thing, which is going to be hard. They would say... Hard right. And there goes our other camera. <laughs> no, so we're no, we're going to keep going. Keep going. <clears throat> but bring the other one back. I think that's just the most <laughs> the most basic answer. And just no, because yeah, yeah, it's and, a basic and, answer does not mean that it's easy. No, and, Because and, when it comes to stuff like this, it's anything but easy. Something can happen chilling. where you're just, you just made the wrong choice and you're just kind of screwed over. But yeah, yeah, yeah. that and, doesn't and, mean it's the end of the world. Yeah. You can always bounce back from everything. And the reason why I wanted to bring it up is because we have uh, like multiple different perspectives from multiple different like professions. I guess and growing up, we're, we're pretty much similar. All of Southern Indiana, country, country bump, not really country bumpkins, but you know. We're, Hell yeah. We, we, we've been around that environment, but, you know, we have, have to cut that out. <laughs> I can't say, raise hell, praise Dale. <laughs> While we're cutting this out, we're at 40 minutes. Just so you know. <laughs> but, but we, you know, me being an engineer, Tyler, uh, mil- military. <laughs> right. what, what is, what is <laughs> Tyler doing? <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I'm Brian handsome. being a youth pastor, Jeff, uh, aspiring teacher. Um, <laughs> Wait a second. It's a good way of saying unemployed. <laughs> and you I mean, and me you both just brother. graduated. <laughs> However, I mean, we have a, a lot of different perspectives. And, and uh, my, my main point being is that how applicable it is to every facet of life is, yeah. is it, the importance of the people you surround yourself with. And I mean, I guess we can get. I kind of want to get a little bit of Brian's perspective and yours, Jeff, before we before we end this off, and then I can kind of round it out. But like, especially how important it is to have because you you deal with uh, uh with youth right at at your church and yes sir um you are a mentor to them and I I'm assuming a lot of the children look up to you and I think especially at the it's even more pivotal at those developmental age you know in Jaws case yeah you know especially. The male mind is still developing up until the ages of twenty five, and maybe still in junior it, high. so it's like you know it, it's still pertinent to jaw, and it's still pertinent to anyone even past that age. But I think in your case, Brian, uh, dealing with with young children, that it's it's extremely important to have that positive influence. And I'm kind of curious. No, yeah, how it is, and I think in terms of as. Like us as just humans in general, we are 
beings that thrive on community and 100%. relationships. And so, like, that's what so many young people are always looking for, is they just want somebody who cares. And, like, really all of us. You, that doesn't change as you get older. You just want people who care about you. And so, like, you... Some people in particular, like some other people people in particular, like we've all kind of found our group of people that, and like people, you know, people come to that, like get added to the group, people leave, people whatever, like it, the group mm -hmm. changes. But like in general, we found people that we know we can, we trust, we know we are, that care about what we think about and care about what we want to do or what we want to, you know, like-minded people that support you and mm -hmm. bring you or, or with you for the journey. And so like, that's what a lot of people are looking for. And yeah. I think that that's, that's like something that's super important. And so like people, like especially younger people, they, the big thing for them, right. Is like, they care so much about what people think about them. Yeah. And that yeah. doesn't, nece that doesn't and necessarily think, change, but no. like, but like now I'd say I care a lot less than I did when I was in high school. Yeah. And, with, and like, it's not that I don't care. It's that, it's a different mindset. Well, I think too with the introduction and the availability of social media and oh yeah, social media, dude, it if, will definitely is a massive influence. If on there was a the yeah, if there was a severity way to, of how they view themselves, just an off yeah. switch, yeah, for an all off of switch for all of them that are under like eighteen, like. <laughs> Because you yeah. can, I mean, Honestly, at the blink of an eye, you can see, you, really, you can compare really yourself to millions general, of other people. Just really off That's the thing, because ultimately you're comparing yourself to others, right? And now yeah. with social media, it's magnified. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, millions and millions of people. And so, but, yeah, and so you get so that it, and you see you that, like... Don't have a good standard foundation, but anyway. Like, I work with students, like, I mean, I mean, with them weekly and then, like, I'm in contact with some of them throughout the week. And so, like, you see that, like, a lot of people struggle with self-image stuff oh, yeah. and yeah. so like all that stuff and so like such an important part about that is having a community around you that lets you know that because most of the time what you think isn't true yeah so oh, yeah. like you're you're yeah. telling lies to yourself I, I all day almost, every I mean, day always pretty much always yeah <laughs> and so like you have having a community around you that lets you you know that that's not true and that the way you're Let's you Beating know yourself that it's up okay is, to like, be you. Yeah, and like empowers you to be yourself and yeah. like do great things and like you know, and so like um, having that around you is what is like super super important. Oh yeah, yeah. and like you yeah. see that a lot, especially in like a city where like now and so like Odin. Obviously, everybody knew everybody, and that was a whole lot different. It was basically a community. We I mean, all, we already knew everybody. Hungry, like yeah. I mean, we all went to school. There was one school, and we all went to it. Yeah. And if you didn't go to it, they're like, "Well, that's weird. Why do you? Why are you here? <laughs> like, yeah. like yeah. what's the like here? That's it's a bit of a drive because you know the nearest other school is like twenty plus minutes away. You don't yeah. have to talk about me. And so, <laughs> like, I'm right here. Well, Jeff, you went to North Davies. Yeah. You just didn't live in. Odin. <laughs> That's what the people were saying at Bloomfield about you. Yeah, That's true. Yeah. That's <laughs> true. They were getting, like, "Why is this kid going to North Davies?" They're getting very mad as I beat them in tennis. Yeah. <laughs> but like you, uh, let's be real. That didn't happen against Bloomfield. No, it did for Jeff. Just not the team. Oh yeah, no, the team didn't, didn't win. <laughs> but the. Uh, uh, but yeah, you see that's that. Slaughtered. That's what's different. In like, <laughs> <laughs> that's what's different. In like Bloomington now is that it's so you yeah. have best friends that don't go to the same school. Yep. Yeah, so big. And you have so like you have like you have people that come and they hang out on Wednesdays like at church with us, and they're like they don't go to the same school, but they're like best friends. And you're like, how? And that's not a bad thing by any means. But like you need, especially if you're a student, I think it helps having those people around you in your school. Yeah. So like. I think of like FCAs and stuff like that, mm. like even just like clubs in general. But like, I an think FCA, clubs, an FCA, extracurricular like, activities are vitally important. Yeah. I think personally, but I won't go into that. Yeah, but yeah no, like too those, much, but, like having like those, a way to build community in your school, whatever it may be, is like super important. But then outside of your school, whether it's a a church, like sports team, like anything like that, like those I mean, are. If, if, yeah, if you just think about it, that's what human society is built on. It's just yeah. a, a just. But like each thing that yeah. we do, right, whether it be work, whether it be school, whether it be hobbies, whether it be extracurriculars, whether it be school, all involves multiple subset communities 
that collaborate together to come to a common goal, right? And yeah. so, I mean, we could go deep into that, but we we won't. But just in general, like, so just kind of to wrap up what you said. In, yeah. In I summary, know, it's, is is basically it's basically that, and and then having, and I think what important for you, Brian, is that in in terms of mentorship, right? You bring that to the to the forefront, right? You you let those people know, like, hey, and 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 so that you would give give and giving them the ammunition, yeah. like, hey, you know, your self image, and you can also be the authoritative figure and let them know, hey, what you're doing is also wrong, right? Yeah. And, and so then like, you you give that a, you feed them that information so that they can bounce that off of each other, and eventually they're self sustaining, right? And that's the ultimate goal, from right? The, for, yeah. From the flip side of that, if you're like, you know, a person that. That is it sucks? In, no, is it good? <laughs> no, that's not where I was going. And is it as cool as everybody else yeah, yeah. and all your friends? But, but uh, no, like if you're in the uh, other boat where you, maybe you're not the person that has issues with whatever, like you're in the mentor role and you're somebody is coming to you to with those issues and they're like, hey, what do I do about this? Mm. And so like, but you have to, as a, as a mentor especially in like a role that I'm in and even in like, I could see it applying the same way in like a school, Jeff, maybe if, if, but like, if you're, yes. you're there every week is you don't, you have, they, they don't have to trust you. Mm -hmm. They don't have mm -hmm. to, like, it's not, no, yeah. like, it's not their job to trust you. They don't know you. Like yeah. they might, it might be their first time ever stepping foot in the building, whether it's, or like first day of school, new kid transfers in or something like they don't know anybody. And they're going to be, they don't have a, like a responsibility to open up to you. And so you have to approach that from the other side of it as a, as a mentor, as a leader, as a whatever. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. Mm -hmm. But you have to approach that in terms of you're going to earn their trust and like their respect. And you're going to show them that you care because they don't have to. Yeah. And it's, so like, it's on you then, rather it's on than you. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, like, exactly. it's on you as a leader, as a mentor to, to show them that they matter and that they, you care about them and that you want to, you want to, uh, you know, help them or if they're going through something like if, or even to know that if they do have something they need to talk about, they can contact you whenever. Yeah. So like, it, but like those are like as a mentor from the mentor side of it, that's what you see in a lot is like a lot of people that want relationships, but they don't know who to trust. They yeah. don't know, like they don't know, they don't know you or they don't know, or they don't know what you and in to, I think today in today's world, a lot of the times it's people think, well, what is this person trying to gain from me, rather than rather than you yeah, know, what, what can we do as a collective to like, all benefit yeah. from each other, right? Yeah, and yeah. so like in and, and they as a whether it be a student or a person that you're mentoring or something, they look at it from a standpoint of what can I or why does this person care they don't know me like what are they trying to get out of it yeah so when Jeff, in reality they're just trying you're just trying to show them that you care and that there's somebody yeah. there that cares for them whether they they may not have anybody in their corner you don't know so jeff i kind of want to get your perspective on this in in terms yeah. in the forms of a of a teacher because i think what brian brought up is is interesting and i agree with 100% however how do you how do you go about teaching students and gaining that respect because yeah. It's necessarily gaining that respect, but like that's using a, that's I, a standpoint that I don't have because I'm there to have fun. Yeah, yeah, I I, that's with, what I'm like, saying. Yeah, I'm there with from with middle schoolers. I'm, I'm there, sure you're there. To, we're there. To, like we have we have times where it's serious, and a lot of the times there's other people that will even take care of that. Like I'm I'm there to have fun with them and empower them and build a relationship with them. Like from a teacher and they understand that too. Yeah. I think they get they yeah. understand from that a, relationship. From a teacher perspective, you have to do from that in a manner where you can also, like, how do you do that from a manner from where you also hold yeah. like an authority figure, a professional yeah. manner, an authoritative figure, as well as because because when you when you're teaching something or when somebody is is learning, right? They can. They, I mean, there has to be somewhat of a symbiotic relationship between you and the student, right? Yeah, because. If they don't have any respect or they don't care about what you're saying, then they're never going to to learn. And they, you know, it's hard because as a teacher, it feels like you almost have to because it's your obligation and your duty for them to learn. And if right. they don't want that, kind of like what Brian was saying, how do you not get into the mindset of like, hey, I have to force that person to like me and to learn? 
because yeah. all, you know maybe not like me but force them to learn where yeah. you know them liking you is a good yeah. proponent of that however it's it seems like that's you know and i agree with brian that's probably not the best way to do it but i feel like i would try way too hard in the opposite spectrum of that rather than letting them come to me i would come you know letting them open up to me i have to force them to open up to me so like or force them to like me but what what's your thoughts on on, on that how, how you do boys <laughs> <laughs> i just ran out of storage oh, let's oh, go, let's go. go. Oh, yeah. but yeah jeff Ooh. i've got to get you how, how you got, handle those situations <laughs> and how you uh and and, yeah. how, and um, your thoughts essentially yeah good the camera is not on me anymore so now who knows who's actually talking <laughs> so, <laughs> i could do yeah. anything i want <laughs> now <laughs> and they'll yeah. never know yeah. Yeah. anyway no um i mean I mean, even just, I mean, it goes by levels as it is, but I mean, like classes oh. themselves are different. Band is different because it, it's a little bit easier because they make connections quicker as it is versus a math class with each other. That is. Ooh, math yeah. sucks. Um, but, I love math. But then, for instance, for me, then I form relationships easier with the students in front of the class versus the back of the class mm. so all the clarinets and flutes that are always up at the front they hear all of the things i whisper under my breath whenever <laughs> oh, the brass no. play something and i can go what the heck was that but i don't say aloud but they hear it and they think it's funny mm -hmm. or whatever i say right which i do purposefully for them to think it's funny so they think that they're getting to hear something that nobody else hears right but it, it is purposeful on my end but then on the flip side of that knowing that they get that interaction that nobody else does that means all out of class time i spend with people that are in the back of the class so i don't talk to anybody from the front of the class when class is done i only talk to people that are from out from the back of the class so that balance. they're still getting those interactions that's smart mm. dude you're yeah. a genius <laughs> <laughs> so there there's that that's like and that's decently specific just to band right yeah as it is um and then for the balancing making them learn versus i mean th that goes into it because as they well, yeah, like I think you those they're going to coincide they're gonna, yeah they're right. going to learn e or want to learn a relationship easier. with them and then they're going to yeah. put in that effort easier mm -hmm. but the other side of it too is like you said making them learn is and one of the best quotes from one of my supervisors i had and it is a balance because there is some of this too is he said you have to realize that there is nothing they can say during the class time that is as important as what you have to say there is not mm -hmm. one thing that they can come up with that is as important and i mean what he means by that is like you have to lead right yeah like I, I like, like it, it can't be this whole thing anarchy right mm. like you have to show them Chaos. what you're wanting from them and be and all of a sudden they start to understand easier right yeah. because you're being more direct you're being clear you're being focused yourself and also so i mean it's like both levels go up at the same time Right, yeah. as you build that relationship, that other side starts to get easier for them just oh, yeah, focusing on you. Yeah. And then so they, they just go up um together, which is nice. Um but I mean yeah, the I mean the start is hard to get all of that going. You got some students who are really easy to be friends with, like dunking on students and <laughs> Like they're they're easy. They think it's funny, and like you're instant. Yeah, not friends, instant. but you're instantly on the good cool terms. teacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, yeah, definitely seeing like it's harder to get the the ball rolling from that perspective, and then building that that relationship between the maintaining the professional relationship in yeah. terms of student and teacher, but while also trying to relate with the student as yeah. you know, you know. Man to man, man to or you know, man to girl, student, whatever, yeah. however you want to, wherever, however you want to put it. Because I think personally, for me, that would be really hard to to maintain. Yeah. I think there's, I think there's a, like, 
there's your professionalism that they get to know you on and then there's a little bit of like 10 percent gray area before you actually hit your full personal life Mm. and if you're just careful and share that in spurts which is totally fine because it's not your actual it's not your full personal life or anything they all of a sudden think that they know part of your personal life Mm -hmm. if you just give them that every now and then they're like oh he's opening up oh wow we're really getting to know who he is (laughs) this is the good stuff (laughs) right yeah so like they so they eat that up meanwhile you teach them for an entire semester and they have no idea that you have a podcast. <laughs> no, they have zero <laughs> idea I have a podcast. <laughs> they, have, they don't know any of my political views. Like, they don't know anything. It's crazy. But, like, you give them that, like, 10%, whatever it may be, and they just freak out. Mm-hmm. So, they're like, oh, he's opening up. Wow, like, we're really getting to know each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which, is, which is, like, it makes them feel good. And it is, I mean, it is nice because they think they're getting a really good relationship with their teacher. But yeah, Tyler, is there anything else you're going to want to add from the, from the military perspective? I know you had a little bit to begin with, but like, I think that's even a different dichotomy between the leadership. Yeah. That's, that's a like the, the soldier or however you, it's, it's a really hard balance from what I understood. But one of my, my favorite people that I ever got to be around, um, was a guy named Ryan Graham. Love this dude to death. Uh, I still talk to him sometimes to this day. And he was a specialist, which is an E4. And that doesn't... You're just like a Joe. That's what they call you. You're a Joe. Mm -hmm. Um, E4 and below, you're the Joes. You guys get the work done. And then your sergeants and above, they'll lead you. Now, when Graham became a sergeant, hearing him talk about this was like the most inspirational thing I've ever heard. Because... He has always been like a huge goofball, you know, kind of a silly guy. And then one night we were all hanging out and he goes, man, I tell you what, the most important role in the army is the E5. And I said, why is that? And he said, well, if you think about it, that's the gap between leaders and the guys who get told to do everything. Yeah. So with this, with this one position, you can eliminate almost every single problem of an operation in a matter of seconds if you have a good relationship with your soldiers because most people see anything above an e5 and an e4 hanging out they call that fraternization and you can't do that and it's a huge no-no which i think is a, a bad thing because we look at special forces teams like green berets those guys hang out every single weekend they know everything about each other and they're a team, an actual team. And whereas like the regular army and stuff, you, you don't, you hardly know your leaders. That's just the guy who tells me to mop the floors and, and sweep. (laughs) And that's the guy who tells me to check the oil and the motor pool. And like, normally you end up hating them and you don't respect them and, and they're supposed to have your respect. But that's another thing. That's all other can of worms is they all think they deserve your respect, but respect is a two way street. You have to give it to earn it. Right. Yeah. And I think that some of that, too, is a lack of proper communication between... Communication's everything. And it's 100% everything. And, and to wrap things up, I'm going to talk a little bit about the... the Wait, the I had another thing. I wanted Uh-oh. to piggyback off of go ahead, the go social ahead. media thing. Just a, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. a knowledge go ahead. nugget go ahead. for all the any young listeners out there. If you see something on social media from somebody and, and it makes you feel less than what you are, you need to know that social media is, is an image of a small portion of something that is not their whole life. That doesn't mean that they're better than you. If you see something that makes you upset and it makes you feel less, just ignore it because I can, you can make yourself look like anything on social media. Oh yeah, 100%. That doesn't mean that their lives are perfect yeah. and that they're perfect people. I mean, it's an image. Their life isn't yeah. Yeah, necessarily personified specifically yeah. by those images you see. And you can There's make, so much more to yeah. life than, 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 a, than a physical image. And, I think that's kind of why I wanted to talk about the different means and, the, and especially take, taking jaw situation, right, and applying the different ways in which we socialize and the way we do it, you know, professionally or personally. And I think we, t- we talk specifically personally, right? Just yeah. kind of give a, a recap how we personally um, can surround ourselves with people who uplift us, right? And also give us the, you know, the 
basically the smack in the back of the head when we do something wrong, right? How important that is. And then also how important it is for, you know, in our, our professions, right, to mentor others or especially, you know, like in Brian's case, right, Brian and Jeff specifically, right, mentoring the younger generation and how important that is that they learn those types of skills, right, and develop those those mindsets and where they can form communities and how forcing relationships is not the the key goal, right? And, and, and forcing them to open up to you specifically is not the, the way you should go about it. However, you should lead by example, right? And that's kind of what Brian was kind of summing up what Brian was saying. Lead as that example to where they, you basically, they're the ones that begin to trust you based off of, 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 of your actions, right? And, and in the course of Jaws case, people are losing trust and faith in his character because of his actions, right? Well, so yeah, it's the and inverse. there's others that, I mean, you have younger people that are going to look to him as no, exactly. an example, yeah. as an example. Yeah. and then they may see that and that's that's the, and they're going to think that's that my that's, other point that's yeah. fine like yeah. that's the thing they're going to think that that's cool and like they should do that because that's what that's why, that's why jaws do i mean that's why jaws jaws is what they're going to think and they're mm-hmm. going to like well i'm going to be like that yeah and then and then in, you got a seventh grader in the car mm-hmm. with loaded like weapons. some older friend with like yeah. loaded weapons and all of a sudden you know and then mm-hmm. you're you're approaching a situation where you could lose lives. Yeah. 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 Cause it, that's cause people why, don't know what they're doing. Yeah. And then that's I mean, why I think he should be punished. Very, uh, he, very he's, severely. I don't think, I think he's going to get, he's going to get the hammer this time around. I think he I should, so. I think he should have gotten it the times before. Oh, right. Right. I think everyone agrees with that as well. I, even in the, in the sports media, yeah. people are saying that, especially with the I mean, craziness that goes on today. The report was, Today was that it's it was an, yeah, a lengthy like, suspension was coming. One hundred percent, and this is this is happening after hard punishment, multiple so like, mass shootings that re- recently happened. It all just in sounds, light of that. I mean, and there was just, one in. Was there not one in Memphis, or was it Nash? It was, it was Nashville. Nashville. It was Nashville, okay, so, right? And it's but like I mean, same state. Yeah. I mean, like yeah. come yeah. on. Yeah, I mean, you have stuff like real. that happening every day, though. You know, like, and that doesn't always get televised. But you know what, Ja Morant is huge, larger than life. Yeah, and there's so many people with eyes on this dude, and so many impressionable minds, and I think that a slap on the wrist is not the right answer here. No, nope. yeah. I think that no, I remember, harsh I remember when punishment and suspension, yeah, should not be the case. I, I think they need like to be the, like, okay, well, get lost. Then I guess, man, like we've given you some chances here. Well, yeah. I think. Well, here's the thing. There was like the first thing too. Like I remember, like when it first happened the first time. Like in Denver or whatever, in the night, like after the Denver game in the nightclub, which I assume was in Denver. Yeah. Um, was, I mean, I remember that happened. And like, it wasn't two, three days later, they finally announced his eight game suspension or whatever. And I mean, it was free jaw was trending on Twitter. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm people like, are like, what? I'm like, what? <laughs> Nothing happened. And they're like, what? <laughs> Twitter is. But I'm like, yeah, yeah like, it, I mean, it's it's, I remember West. seeing that because I, I went on to post something for the social media or for us, like for our podcast. I went to schedule that post for our podcast, the one that yeah. announced volume two and free child was trending on Twitter. I'm like, what are we doing? Yeah. And so, like, I think each person kind of and, and we'll, we'll go ahead and, and start to wrap things up. But like, like you said, Brian kind of like developing that relationship between and understanding how that relationships between the individual in terms of a personal manner. I think that's important, right? But like, yeah. and, and I've already went over that. Jeff's is kind of balancing between professional, right? And individual. Yeah. Which is, which is vital, especially in the, in the teaching realm and how to balance that between personal life and professionalism and, and in establishing that type of a relationship. And, how important that is. And then, and, and, you know, in Jaws case, and you jaw, I mean, you can, you can learn from this from each aspect, right? It's, yeah, it's, and, it's and between Josh the individuals, is, between professional, like people within the league, professional yeah. and jaw who needs that mentoring and understanding on basically what he's doing is wrong. And Jaws and just one example it. of many. Jaws one example of man. We're just, just using this kind of the this, one that just happened. Just happened. Mm-hmm. And we're segueing that into a more general, yeah. general approach. And then what Tyler is, is the importance of, I, I, it's a proper leadership yeah. yeah, and, and communication. And I'm kind of, kind of robbed from the communications per- perspective and leave that into my personal life in terms of engineering. And one thing that's a common struggle between engineers specifically is communication. And I think a, a lot of the times 
and it's something I've I've experienced before is engineers arguing about one particular topic and they both have the correct answers but are saying it in different ways. That happens all the time. <laughs> Constantly. They're arguing like, oh, this is that this or that. And they're literally saying the exact same thing but in two different ways and they're not really picking it up. And then they come because usually they everyone comes to the same conclusion, except we all have a different way of yeah of, of looking at it. And perspective. In, in different perspective. That's one hundred percent correct. Thanks, Tyler. Welcome, dude. <laughs> but, I'm, the, I'm the word guy, dude. He's today, the word guy I'm today. the word guy. Word and phrase guy. Thank you, Tyler. Hey. But um, wear sight. Wear sight. <laughs> For with. <laughs> but but yeah, and and it's it's vitally important to have proper means of communication because I think a lot of that even happening with with the situation that we're using as an example with Jaw, there is just a, a lack of communication between the community. Right, his community, the basketball community, with the media, with the people, and the people with each other. It's just like because they all having different perspective on on what y'all did, and never really came to a general consensus. And people disagree. I, I, I just think like objectively, right? We know what he did was bad. It's yeah. just the way that we communicated how it should be handled. I think was poor. And with how the the yep. league communicated that with us, how they handle situations is poor. And let's be real, the league. I mean, we're what we were a few weeks away from the playoff picture. Yeah, they one hundred percent lightened the suspension just because they want had to get John in the playoff it's, game. It's money. It's all money driven, and it's money is the root of all <laughs> evil. It's, it's true, horrendous. But like I said, uh, I think we can all agree that the people and the environment that you put yourself in. It's vitally important in not only your development at a young age, but also when you're building your character as an adult. Just life. Throughout your in entire general. life. Yep. And that's kind of kind of the, the big uh, takeaway that I hope you, all, you guys got from that. And kind of getting all, all our different perspectives from different professions and different uh, walks of life. So, so yeah. yeah. But uh, with that being said, we... Hope you enjoyed uh, today's podcast. Um, we hope you enjoyed our scuff cameras. Our scu- yeah, we, again, I apologize. We'll, hopefully, we'll get this resolved by next week. I mean, we'll have it resolved week. one way or another by next week, but then we might, whether there we might be fix a few these things. or we have to send them back send them back and do something different, different. we'll have it resolved one way or another. We'll, we'll fix it, but yeah. So, like I said, <clears throat> if you guys like the podcast, uh, like the podcast. <laughs> On our YouTube channel and check out uh, our Spotify because we can like uh, just to recap from last week. Uh, we're we're on two platforms now: Spotify and YouTube. So you can check us out there. So. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. Peace.